Hello friends, I had a few minutes free on this Saturday, so I thought I'd uh, talk to you a few minutes on uh, something I've wanted to do for a while, um, is do a walkthrough on my misprinted Legacy Burn deck. Um, I've kept kicking the can down the road because I've pretty consistently upgraded it, but I've now come to a point where uh, the upgrades are coming very slowly and costing more and more to do, so I think um, right now is about as good a time as any because uh, there's not a whole lot of upgrades coming, um, and when I do them, they're going to cost me a lot more. So um, I think what I want to do is uh, just talk for a moment about what the deck is. Um, if you play Magic, then you're probably not unfamiliar with Burn as an archetype. Let me get my here. Um, but some of the newer players might not be familiar with its history, so um, some version of this deck has been around since pretty close to the beginning uh, of competitive play. Uh, not necessarily Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, but um, in 96 or so was really kind of the beginning of the actual archetype uh, was when the the Sly deck uh, made its splash uh, at a, a PTQ and it was a big deal. Um, it was kind of the first deck that intentionally uh, paid attention to uh, mana curves and being able to play something every turn where previously um, it was you know trying to save up, you know, make your land drops and play something big and splashy to close out the game, where the Sly deck was trying to get in underneath those strategies. So that was the, the grandfather of, of the Burn deck. Now, obviously, over time, it got refined. Um, and, you know, the, the original uh, Sly deck was in a weird block-constructed format where you had to have uh, this many cards from Homelands and this many cards from Fallen Empires and stuff like that. So it had it had a really weird uh, deck list, but um, it got the job done, and that that kind of archetype was was used. Um, I started in about '97, so it was not super well established, but well established enough, uh, considering there really wasn't much of an internet around then, other than um, really bad message boards um, so you know it had been published in in some magazines and things um, so my my version of that that I played in 97 had you know, Mog, Mog Fanatic, Jackal Pup, Curse Scroll, Fashino Sandstalker, Ball Lightning uh, sometimes I would splash uh, black for uh, reanimate and unearth to recycle my Ball Lightnings maybe with Vampire Hounds things like that um, there's a lot more homebrewing back then, but in any case, um, you want to drop something on turn one, drop something on turn two, drop something on turn three, and um, the main goal is to do a lot of damage directly to your opponent and get past any of their defenses before they can actually develop their board state. Um, and your big decisions uh, in, in being a burn player is how much do I stray from that game plan? Um, do I ignore the threats that are on the table or do I start trying to deal with them? Do I try to go wide? Do I try to attack around them? Or do I try to remove the threats that are on the table to try to preserve my creatures so that I can keep those as persistent threats? Things like that. Um, I won't talk too much about that today, uh, but that's something to talk about. Uh, if, if you are a burn player and want to talk about that, feel free to contact me. I love talking about that kind of thing. A um, couple of myths about uh, the deck. Uh, burn players are bad. Burn is only a budget deck. Well, let's talk about burn players are bad. Well, yeah, sometimes. Um, it, it is... It can be a budget deck. You can build uh, the cheapest... The cheapest version of Burn um, runs all mountains, and you can build it for a couple hundred bucks in, in Legacy. 
and that's that's pretty budget. Uh, so, and it, and the cheapest version of that deck, I, I won a couple of win a duels, uh, win a win a duel land tournaments in Oklahoma City uh, a couple years back with the absolute cheapest version of Legacy Burn. So, absolutely, it's it's a viable deck if you can play it and you know your lines. It's it's a good deck. Um, you do have to know your lines. You do have to know your meta. You have to know your opponent. Um, and that's where we talk about uh, skill barrier versus skill ceiling. So the skill barrier on burn is very low. Um, you can get into burn and do sort of well and do just fine uh, by just knowing lightning bolt to the face. Um, a, that's a lot of new players first deck because you don't have to know a whole lot to be able to put creatures down attack with them and you know send some damage directly to your opponent and you can run away with some games like that um, and a lot of cases that is absolutely the correct play um, you can get a lot more uh, nuanced at higher levels of play but uh, and in a lot of cases, that's how you run away with it. Um, but, you know, the bad players often help disguise the good players. And because of how many bad players there are, a lot of the good players can just sneak in and be really underestimated um, and kind of run away with some games because of that. Because, you know, you throw a, a basic mountain down and put down a goblin guide and your opponent's like oh it's burn i'll run away with it and then you start playing a board control strategy and all of a sudden oh okay this is not what i expected um the myth burn is a budget deck well uh i think with with our discussion today we'll thoroughly disprove that um and you know the myth of burn is just an aggro deck with limited lines of play. Uh, like I said, you can you can kind of run it as a board control strategy. Half your deck doubles as creature removal. Um, see, you know, Eidolon of the Great Revel, um, Sulfuric Vortex, things like that. Um, you can really do minor changes to the main board and the sideboard to really change your deck to an evolving meta and uh, kind of head those things off at the pass and really be able to evolve to whatever kind of meta game there is. Um, anyway, enough chit chatting about that. Um, I just wanted to kind of talk about how this deck is viable in most meta games. You can you can play it pretty much no matter what's popular. But the point of this is to kind of show off um, what I've done with this deck and you know so since since I'm the mountains guy let's start with the basic lands um, I have pulled out some of the mountains because I've gone um, there are two basic builds with burn one of them is just mountains and the horizon lands and one of them uses fetches I've gone to the fetches plan so that I can run Searing Blaze because it's now a creature heavy meta thanks to um, Ragavan. Um, but okay, so in no particular order, um, this is my first mountain. This guy's really cool. I forget where I picked it up. This is actually a Rivals Quick Start four cornered, four square cornered mountain. Oh, goody. Um, Rivals Quick Start, one of the four distinct uh, printings of 4th edition. Uh, there were not a lot of errors in Rivals Quick Start, not a big print run, but I managed to get one of the few big errors out of that. Um, I have a couple of jump start errors. This one is one of the few mountain on top of mountain. This is a uh, 269 mountain printed on top of a 270 mountain. Um, I really think it should tap for two red, but uh, not many tend to agree with me on that. Um, 
This one is one of my long-term goals that I recently uh, was able to finish. I got a an M15 test mountain. Um, you can see down here in the bottom right corner. That is a slightly different, right there, is a slightly different hollow stamp than we actually ended up with. Those are uh, deeper stamped, and you can actually feel it even through the double sleeve. Those are stamped deeper, kind of like the Guru stamps. Um, probably more expensive too, which is probably why they didn't end up being done like that. Um, got this one from Stu Summers, who is the guy who kind of has most of those. Um, this I got from my good friend Lewis. Um, beautiful example of a sheet edge. And this, uh, because it came from Japan, is probably a Japanese printing, which is probably why it says CM plate uh, and then has the EN for English language. We don't see this a whole lot, and I'm guessing, this is a wild guess, you know, if it was printed in the US, they probably wouldn't need to specify English language. But that's something really cool. Uh, nice big piece of sheet edge there, beautiful. Um, I'll bring that back to later. This is one of my favorites. I overpaid for this a little bit because this was the first one that came up uh, in Jumpstart. Um, I tried to get the first example of this kind of error from uh, another friend, but it was not for sale for the longest time. Uh, but we've got a rare stamp upside down on top of a basic mountain. And of course the back is also upside down which is how it ended up getting that. Um, a beautiful piece, I don't regret picking it up. Um, this one kind of speaks for itself. One of the kind of famous silver binos uh, from Invasion. No matter how many pictures you see of these, Nothing really does it justice. You have to see them in person. They're just striking. Um, just gorgeous, and I'm really glad that I was able to get the art that I wanted to. I had the chance to pick one of these up for about a third the price back in like 2013, and I said, I'll never pay $100 for a mountain. <laughs> um, these last ones I will present as a single piece that they'll fit in the frame together. The kind of, yeah, there we go. Um, we have this beautiful ink error, black ink bleed, Alpha Mountain that I got from Greg Allen. Really cool guy. Uh, I just happened to have exactly what he needed uh, in trade. The only thing that he needed in trade <laughs> really cool story. Um, a lot of a lot of this deck is built on kind of serendipity, just having exactly what is needed to make it work. Um, there are a few of these around, but not many. Um, this middle one is also alpha. It is a very very off center alpha mountain. I'll pick it up to kind of show. You can see the little white dots down at the bottom. The little white triangles are touching the edge. Now when I picked that up, I almost didn't. And uh, some friends of mine in the community said, you better get it. And back when, that was probably 2014, and that was before a lot of us knew any better, and we were all holding out, now we'll wait. We'll wait for a real miscut. A real miscut from Alpha and Beta and we, we end up coming to find out there, there really aren't any or many and come to find out as far as Alpha is concerned this is about as good as it gets so I'm very glad that 
some of those folks really talked me into getting this one because I think I only paid about 40 bucks for it back then. Uh, and now it is certainly not for sale at all. Um, this one, um, kind of a similar situation. Very, very off-center Arabian Nights Mountain. Um, and, you know, it's not, not quite miscut. It's got a little bit of a stripe of, of black on the side. Um, but there's not a whole lot out there that are more severe than that. One, one maybe two should exist or should have existed at one point that were uh, fully miscut. But as far as I know, they haven't surfaced. So were they caught in quality assurance? Were they thrown away by somebody? Were they lost in a fire? Or are they still in sealed product? Who knows? Maybe they'll surface someday, but as far as I know, they have not surfaced. So for now, this is one of the better off-center examples that are known. Uh, and I'm very glad that I was able to pick it up. Unfortunately, it was the beginning of COVID. Um, so I had just a very small amount of uh, discretionary fund and I didn't have a whole lot of competition on it which is good news for me, bad news for others. Um, so getting back to our lands, we're also running fetches here. Um, we've got a nice little arid mesa here with the stamp that's way out of place and only part of it. Um, this one's off center and showing registration dot in the top corner now this one's from uh, Modern Horizons 2 a couple of these are when you're when you're buying misprinted fetch lands you kind of just got to take what you can get otherwise you're gonna break the bank this is another one this is a fulfillment error rather than a printing printing error uh, this is a beautiful um, retrofoil normal retrofoil not the uh, etched, which I think the etches, etched foils are fine, but uh, this is the more desirable one. This one's got kind of a skid mark from the the roller uh, picking up the sheet. Um, I think it looks lovely. Um, gentleman gave me a wonderful deal on that because uh, he wanted it to go and finish up my playset. This one isn't very good. The stamp is just kind of out of place there, but I opened that myself and I'm counting it. It's a nice foil uh, expedition and the stamp is off kilter. Um, this one's a back error, not much to it. Again, these are kind of the least impressive of the whole game. That's why we're getting them out of the way. It's just got kind of a little streak on the back there. They're misprinted fetches, so they're good enough. This one's just got kind of cool. It's a, a Japanese expedition with a crimp up top. Now, the Sun Baked Canyons, these are very necessary, and these have really energized the deck uh, because it gives you some drawing power. I'm very happy to say I now have a full factory error set. Now, two of them are just missing a stamp, which isn't all that impressive, but it's fine. Um, this one has a cool stamp uh, into the text box. This one is exceptional. I'm very happy that I got this one. Um, you can see it's a foil, number one. That's important. Come on, focus. Now, you see on the corners here, you see a little bit of white there actually silver. The corners are square, kind of. Um, the paper layer was cut properly, but it didn't cut through the foil layer. So it's got square foil corners, but it doesn't have square paper corners. So it's just got little foil tags on the corners. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen that on another card. Um, so it's really exact circumstances have to come together for that for that error to happen and I'm really glad that I picked that one up 
Okay, let's move along. Now, it's not a burn deck unless you've got lightning bolts. So, let's go ahead and set up our bolts here. These are connectors that I picked up. Um, I almost didn't get them, but clearly I had to. You can't not get those. Beautiful. But they didn't have the fourth one. And it still bothers me to this day. And you can see over here on this side is another card. So over here is where the fourth one would connect. Maybe someday I'll find the fourth one, but it's actually okay because I have a really nice fourth one. It is a uh, French black border with sheet edge up top. And I really had to fight for that one more than I would like to talk about. Um, but it is a lovely piece. And you know, if you're going to have a burn deck, you better have some really nice lightning bolts. Now, half of your burn deck is basically constituted by various iterations of lightning bolt. So let's continue talking about iterations of lightning bolt. Um, next is chain lightning. Now, I do have one non-factory cut chain lightning. Now I have a couple of back errors and very, very, very minor front errors, but I don't like them. I want it to be a little bit more flashy, so I left this one NFC chain lightning in here. I'm still looking to pick up one more nice front error. Now, uh, a, an Italian Legends one just sold uh, with a front miscut and a centered back and it went for $2,000. $2,000 American. I am not interested in paying that much to, to complete my playset. set. Um, so hopefully I'll just get another nice, uh, nice one from Eternal Masters or Battle Bond or Jumpstart. You know, Jumpstart's been kind of a, a nice gift to us all here. Speaking of Jumpstart, friend Daniel Anschutz gave me a nice connection on this one. Uh, beautiful chain lightning from Jumpstart with sheet edge down at the bottom. Just beautiful. Thank you for that connection. Thank you for that deal, Daniel. This one's really cool. It's kind of hard to see here. And I'll try to make it work. Now, see down at the bottom, this is a foil. You can see the star down here. You can see it reflecting down, down at the bottom. But up the top, it's not foil. It is not foiled except at the bottom. None of it reflects except down here. Really cool error. Um, I kind of had to buy it on faith because it's very hard to show that <laughs> in photographs, but I'm glad I did. Um, this is mine, my English Legends um, chain lightning that I love dearly, uh, connection made by my buddy Brian Hardenberger here. Uh, thank you for that connection. This is one that... Apparently now I can't afford to buy anymore. <laughs> so if I hadn't had it for years already, I would not be able to have it. So um, just a beautiful piece. It is the same on the back as it is on the front. Uh, so it's not not exactly the same error as that one, uh, but just beautiful here. Above it is a power and toughness from a red creature. I'm sure we could probably figure out what that is by the sheet layout, but I'm not that curious. Let's go on to some more bolts. Um, lava spikes are the strictly worse bolt because they're sorceries and they only hit a player. 
So this one, uh, nice little uh, foil with a crimp up top. Nothing wrong with a foil crimp. Respectable, looks nice. Uh, picked this one up from the Ben Mathis collection. Nice little red speckles everywhere. This one I had to buy the connectors. I hate having to buy the connectors. So if you want a blue Zubera, I've got the blue Zubera with the same uh, red splotchiness on it, but it looks really nice. And then I'm very glad I was able to get a little roller roller error uh, on one of the old frame lava spikes. I was hoping I would be able to find more than just one in the old frame, but you know, I take what we can get. Uh, Time Spiral Remastered was not a widely printed set, unfortunately. It was a very good set. I really loved it. They did not print enough of it. Moving forward with some more bolts, we have lots of bolts. Let's talk about rift bolts. You gotta have rift bolts. Now there's two arts uh, for rift bolt. Um, I think I like this art better, the uh, time spiral art that has the little zombie guy getting bolted. Nice little... Uh, this error kind of shows, demonstrates that the sheet goes through this way rather than this way. So you've got kind of a little trickle going through here. Very nice. This one, very off center, not quite miscut. Good enough. A workmanlike misprint. Uh, this guy. Just a nice little yellow ink bleed on the side. Again, good enough. Rift bolt, good, good rift bolt misprints are kind of hard to come by. This one's really solid. Um, got this one uh, from my buddy Simon. Piece of a blue card on the bottom. Solid misprint. Good miscut. All right, now rounding out our kind of bolts, um, these are the ones that, these are kind of in, in the flex spot. Um, these are what we play in a creature heavy meta, uh, which right now with all the Ragavans and Delvers and um, right now in Legacy, there's, there's a lot of Delver type decks, there's a lot of um, Death and Taxes, just a lot of creatures running around. So, so what do we run? We run Searing Blaze with Fetches. This one's pretty cool. It's actually uh, in uh, World Wake. There were a lot of uh, double printed text. And you can't see it super well here, but there is some double printing going on there, and I it's very light so I can't tell what other what other card is printed behind there but something else is printed there um, this one I have no idea what that is but there's like a black something or other splotchiness there I believe that's Italian and you know I would think that I would be able to find because this printing this uh, player rewards printing uh, is available you would think I would be able to find more of these with crimps on them, but I've only been able to find one crimped Searing Blaze from the Player Awards. I still need one more, and it's a crimp down there at the bottom. I still need one more to get my play set. So, if anybody has one more Searing Blaze uh, misprint, even if it's just a crimped Player Awards, I'm very interested in picking up another. Uh, for now, and of course, this is fine um, because I don't have just a whole bunch of fetches in the deck. Um, the fourth spot is currently taken up by a Searing Blood, um, which is fine. 
because most of your threats are not a three toughness threat. They're a one or two toughness threat. Um, so this actually kind of gives some flexibility in that you don't have to make the land drop. Uh, this is a, an oversaturated searing blood. Got this also from my buddy Lewis, who is just always finding great stuff. Shout out to Lewis Cole. Now let's talk about our creatures because so far, we, you know, Sly was a whole make your one drop, make your two drop. Um, and we haven't seen any creatures yet. Well, you've got to have your goblins. Goblins are the fast creatures. So we've got it. We've got our goblin guides. This guy, that is our, that's our crimpy boy. He's just got a tiny little crimp down there at the bottom. One of these is going to be replaced by a much better crimp of this, this art, full art, uh, in Japanese with a much better crimp also coming from Lewis. So that'll be cool. Another one. This one's just a wandering stamp down there. Usually I don't like those, but that is really way off there. Just way, way off. This one's nice. That is a good, good roller mark. And I believe... Nope, that's not on the back as well. But a good front roller mark. This is the one that's front and back, I think. This is got a roller mark on front. It's not quite as severe on the front. But I believe it is also on the back, which is kind of cool. Turn one goblin guide. Now for the for the function of the deck, turn one goblin guide is excellent because it's not only drop a threat, take two. It's also turn over the top card of your deck. Let me see it. I now know, I now have some information. I have a general idea of what you're playing, or can eliminate what are you not playing. Um, what else is a good fast creature? How about Monastery Swift Spear? Now this is kind of a common error, but that's fine. These are uh, the light print. Cons the Tarkir Swift Spears as compared with your regular red. You kind of see they're very pale. But also, I've got a foil from uh, whatever, I think it was Eternal Masters? Whatever Masters set that is. The black printing is very light there, so that's nice. So that's a light printed playset from different sets. Um, also in your one drops, important to have a Grim Lava Mancer. Um, in your 75, one to two, um, I don't think you should leave them out entirely. Some people are leaving them out entirely. I think that's wrong. I think having one to drop down, if they don't have to deal with it, it's a mistake. I think if you drop it down and they don't have the targeted removal to deal with it, you can just sit there and empty your graveyard and either play board control with it and kill creatures or just do damage to their face with it. Beautiful card. Um, two might be a little bit much because they're kind of bad in multiples um, if you don't have enough ways to fill your graveyard. Uh, fetch lands and horizon lands are the kind of traditional ways to do that. This synergizes with the uh, Searing Blaze strategy. You've got Fetches, you've got Horizon Lands. Those give you your Landfall trigger that also puts cards in your graveyard. Um, this is uh, one of the few Torment copies of Grim Lava Mancer with a misprint. This is crimped up top. Uh, it doesn't belong to Chris... Uh, Man, I always mix up the last name. Sorry, Chris. Grim Lava Mancer, Chris. 
You know who I'm talking about. He's got just every... <laughs> just every law that means He's a really good guy. Uh, really fun to talk to. Um, more creatures. Man, that's going to bother me. I'm just going to... I believe it's Gregory. Yeah, Chris Gregory. There we go. Okay. Um, you've got to have your Eidolons. Eidolon and the Great Rebel has... That card almost single-handedly revived Burn back in 2014 when it was printed. Um, Storm was a big deal back then. This kind of put Storm in its place for a while. You can play around it. Um, it basically just, you have to answer it. Uh, it's really great in Legacy Burn. Uh, also great in Modern. Uh, but the thing is, uh, fantastic card. But as, as many times as it's been printed, there haven't been a whole lot of misprints. So these three copies, or two of these three copies, there's one known misprint that's kind of common-ish. It's just that corner has a little splotch on it on the back. I think this one is a little more severe. There we go, that was a lot nicer. On these foils. This one's just off-center on the front. And then this is a non-foil that has a light print. If you can see it. Yeah, just gray corners, or gray borders, rather. I would like better copies of these, but I have never seen better misprints of this card. Um, if they exist, I am not aware of them. Um, we have a few more spells. Um, while we're on a utility cards kick, let's talk about Light Up the Stage. This is a card. Um, let's see, and I, I bought another copy that was supposed to be kind of misprinted, and it really isn't. I know of three misprinted copies of this card in the world. The third is currently lost in Mexico, basically. Um, these are the two misprinted, misprinted copies that are accounted for. This one has square corners. This one has one square corner and one chewed corner, where this side, the corner rounding die was off kilter and cut too high over here and missed up here. Very, very cool. Um, yes, this can probably count as a uh, marked card. Now I have a bunch of square corners in this deck. Um, if you want to get technical, if I bring this to a competitive Ariel event, yeah, there's a lot of cards that could be marked here, including my uh, bolts that are not regular card shaped. Um, we'll take a moment to talk about that. What I'm usually told by judges is, wow, this deck is really cool. It's very clear that you're here to play these weird cards. Um, now, I've only really played side events. I haven't played any like big money events. Um, what I'm usually told is, these are fine. You've got a bunch of weirdly shaped cards. I don't think that you would bring these here with the express intent of cheating with them. I will be watching you. If I see you fondling your deck in such a way that it looks like you're trying to glean information, you will be the first person I boot for it. I say that's fine. Um, I also have a personal uh, kind of code that if someone does get bent out of shape about it, I'll walk. I, I don't. I really don't care. I'm not. I'm not at an event really to try to win money. If I can get some prizes and stuff, great. Uh, I'm at an event to have fun and make people look at weird stuff. 
Um, now let's look at our finishers. Um, we're still in the 60. We're not. Oh goodness, we're 40 minutes in. We're not even in the, into the sideboard yet. Uh, let's look at Fire Blast, the classic finisher, because um, you get them down to four life, and they're 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 tapped out, and you're tapped out, and they're they tap out so that they can swing for lethal. They they tap out so they do a combat trick, and you go ha 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 ha, sacrifice two mountains, Fire Blast. And then they go, ha, 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 force of will. And you go, okay, sacrifice two more mountains, fire blast. Great, that's how you win. Oh, yeah, so this one's a full miscut, uh, uh, twisted miscut. Uh, piece of another card here. Got that one from my buddy Kevin G. Very cool guy. Um, this one's just a nice off-center. Shorter border up top. This one is... Uh, Somewhat more common error. It's grayish borders. I've got a couple of these. Uh, if I ever need to run a fourth, I will run another one of those. Um, I've been running three of these in the main. They're really upsetting to get two of these in your opening hand. So two to three of these in your main deck is correct. It's it's not fun to get two of these in the main in the in the first hand rather. Um, what else is good for a finisher? Um, these are great for finishers and utilities. Exquisite Firecraft. I think three to four of these in the 75 is correct right now. These are also some of my worst misprints. Um, I actually need to get, get back together with my buddy Corbin and get my other copy of this that, that should be a better upgrade. This is probably my best, or no, this is probably my best misprint of it so far because it's got the uh, wacky gold uh, stamp. Um, these just have kind of slightly wandering stamps. I don't like it at all. I need better misprints of those, but they just have not been showing up. But they're good enough. Um, so let's talk about sideboard. Because if you're playing in a tournament, you're going to be sideboarding. Um, artifact strategies, you got to be ready for that. Um, we got Smash to Smithereens. Great card, great card. Um, here we've got one that's very extra red saturation, especially for that set. This set you uh, usually is very kind of faded. This is very, very weirdly red. Um, this one has a crimp, and this one is very cool. Got this one from Brian Hardenberger as well. It has got a double stamp. See it there. Stamp it. It's stamped twice. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I'll save those for last. Those are those are baller. Um, one of my other remaining uh, non-factory cut pieces. This price of progress. I've got another. I believe I've got one more original printing price of progress coming. Uh, whenever I can get a shipment from Japan. It's going to be great. Um, so that'll be replaced at some point in the future. This one also came from my buddy Lewis. Nice little albino splotchiness down there. And then this one, is that a crimp? Yeah, it's crimp down bottom. Great. I do have a factory back error on one of the EMA printings, but eh, just not feeling it. Don't want to play it. Um... Price progress is great. Uh, obviously, for playing somebody who's playing a lot of non basics. Um, this is currently my sideboard solution for graveyard strategies. Is it perfect? No. It's not even fantastic. Um, it is kind of generic and it's only kind of annoying. Um, here we've got a miscut and two splotches. Great. So the thing about Tormod Script and the thing about Burn on uh, against graveyard strategies. This is not to stop their their strategy. This is to either 
delay their strategy by a turn by making them play around it. So if you can put this out, ideally, the other thing about this is you play your Monastery Swift Spear, then you drop the Tormod's Crypt, you get the Prowess Trigger off it, you can squeak one more damage point out of it. Tiny amount of synergy. Um, you drop it out, and either they hesitate and play slow to play around it, or maybe you can catch them empty out a bunch of stuff and then they get a smaller payload out of whatever their strategy is and it's less dangerous basically if you can buy an extra turn our deck is a four turn deck three to four turn deck now a post sideboard might be a five turn deck but if we can get if we can buy an extra turn by dropping the sideboard card great that a lot of times that's enough to win. Um, more often than not, this is misdirection. Just something to drop to make them think about it and hope that our opponent just stops thinking about the bolt going to their face. A lot of times, if you know if you're talking dredge, this is actually what's going to do more good. Um, like for your bridge from below strategy uh, you actually want to kill your own goblin guide um, to kill that bridge from below and this will also sweep their zombies volcanic fallout uh, three mana instant can't be countered um, this is probably one of the best sideboard cards for burn vastly underutilized number one it is not counterable it gets in two points of damage to your opponent. So it can kind of act like a slightly worse exquisite firecraft. Um, I have used that last two points a number of times to finish out games. Um, it's great for it's great for running up against uh, death and taxes. It's absolutely incredible against Delver strategies. If you are running up against Dragavan, Volcanic Fallout is just game ender. Um, the only way they're winning is if they've got you know, a sword on something. Or if they've already won. It's This is a, just a fantastic card. Uh, anyway, so that's almost all of it. The last three, these are, I'm very proud of these. Um, I do have a play set of misprinted Sulfuric Vortex, but um, I run three. I think four is probably too many. Um, if you decide to run one in the main, you can run three in the in the board. But I think one in the main is unnecessary currently, unless there are just a ton of life gain strategies out there. Um, happy to say I'm one of the few that actually has th three misprinted original copies. Nice uh, uh, little splotch up here and then two off-center copies. Um, this is absolutely an auto-include whenever you're playing against Death and Taxes because they're going to bring in Batter Skull. Um, this allows you to just go ahead and take that four damage hit and not care about it. Um, that's the only way you're winning against death and taxes. Now, what about changing a meta metagame? Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, the Searing Blaze package came in. What comes out? Um, this is what came out is my set of Flame Rift. Uh, when it's not a super creature heavy meta, or if, when it's not a super aggro creature heavy meta, when it's very mid range and you just want to do a whole lot of damage non interactive, Flame Rift is just great. I also picked up, these are a little bit more common. You can get these. I don't know that I want to take that out. The, what might come out is this one. 
Uh, it's got a registration error. It's not as flashy, but I really like that the the old. I like the old art. I don't like the new art. Um, but if if it changes back again and it goes away from a creature aggro meta, those might go back in. Um, I did pick these up. Um, I'm not super likely to put them in anytime soon, but it's nice to have if it becomes uh, likely that Super Friends type decks will come back. What else do I have? I have a fourth Volcanic Fallout. I absolutely have run four Volcanic Fallouts in the deck. I have run one in the main and three in the board. I have run two in the main, two in the board. I have a fourth I have a fourth normal Firecraft, and I think I have a, an off-centered copy that I think I probably should put in. There's my fourth Vortex. Um, I have another front error copy of Grim Lava Mancer. It's got a off-kilter stamp from Jumpstart. Um, other things we can run. We can run Bone Crusher Giants. Bone Crusher Giants can be interesting. Um, I haven't run these in this deck yet. There have been times where I've considered it. I just haven't yet. But it's always in the back of my mind. Because they are super useful. And a 4-3 body is not really... A 4-3 body with protection is rarely irrelevant. There's my fourth Fire Blast. A little light printed blood moon. I should probably put that in my binder because it's relevant to mountains. And then here's another couple of misprinty searing bloods for those extra creature heavy metas. So that's pretty much the long and short of it. It has been nearly an hour talking about this. I'm sure everybody's surprised that I can do that. Um, thanks for joining me. Um, if you have any questions about burn decks, misprints, mountains, um, or anything like that, feel free to hit me up in comments. You can get me at um, auth underscore king on Twitter. You can get me at mountain underscore king underscore auth on Instagram. That should be all in the comments or in the description here. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, this was a long time coming. Um, I am a an admin now. Uh, I guess I should probably announce that. I'm, I've now gone from a, a mod moderator to an administrator in the misprints buy sell trade group on Facebook. Uh, so I've got a little bit more power and responsibility there. Um, Thanks to everybody who uh, supported me there. That group is still growing. We are still doing our very best to make sure to have the highest levels of moderation and uh, quality control there. Make sure only the best stuff gets through. That's about all I've got today. Um, a lot more stuff coming through. I'm going to have some more authentications. Uh, on some high-end stuff. Uh, I will have old school decks to talk about soon uh, and maybe some other stuff so uh, thanks for tuning in if you made it this far. <laughs> See you soon.